in this video, I will just briefly talk about um, how DQ learning works. Now, DQ learning is just a generalization of Q learning in the deep neural network settings. So, uh, since my previous videos were pretty long, I'm going to make this one pretty short. And I'll just go over superficially over how deep Q learning works. There are plenty of videos about it online, on plenty of articles about it, and I urge you to check those out. Here, this is just a brief review. So again, looking at how Q learning works, uh, the update rule is like this. So you have the um, your new Q value being updated in this fashion. So you take the old value, and then you add this um, um, this temporal difference with the learning rate and temporal difference is basically um, the reward the discounted maximal q value for the next step and for the next step excuse me and then the difference so uh difference with respect to the old value so basically this is how your q value updates now in deep q learning instead of having q uh the q value obtained from a table you will use a deep neural network to figure out what the Q values are. And um, I'm going to refer to some images from this nice article in analytics video. Uh, so check out this article. I'll also put a link to it below. But the images are pretty nice. So I'm going to use some images from this article where uh, this image nicely demonstrates the difference between Q learning and deep Q learning. In a Q learning, or rather, sorry, the, Q, the tabular Q learning. In the tabular Q learning setting, you had the state, you entered the state and the action, and that gave you the Q value. So if you remember from our previous videos, how we did tabular Q learning, you specified both the states and the action, and that would give you the Q value. In the deep Q learning setting, what you do, it's slightly different, where you just specify the state in this uh, neural network, which is your uh, deep Q network. And the outputs are, so it would have n outputs. Each output corresponds to each action. And the value of those outputs would be the Q values. So suppose you have three actions um, in the case that we are doing. So we would have three outputs and all those three outputs would be the Q values to the corresponding actions. And uh, since these are Q values, they're not, um, so there's no activation layer before them. So uh, it's an aggregation. So these values could be anything. They're not bound zero to one or ReLU bounded or anything like that. They could be anything because they're Q values. So again, the difference is here, you just specify the state and you get the Q values associated to all the actions. And then you can pick out the maximal or whatever you wanna pick out. So that's how uh, basically, that's the main difference. And then you would apply the same Q learning step. So the algorithm remains the same. Oh, sorry about this. Let me bring it down. The algorithm remains the same. You use the same equation. It's just that uh, the way you're calculating the Q values is using this neural network. So now um, when you update the Q value, you would uh, basically use the old value. And then here you will find whichever output gave the maximal Q value, you will take that maximum. So pretty straightforward. So let's uh, let's see how um, the network is going to learn. Right, so if I take this value to the left-hand side, that would tell me what is the delta Q or what is the change in Q, which would be alpha times these first two terms minus the old value, right? So this next thing, well, the first two terms over here are basically um, the new value. Oh, well, it says right here, it's the new value and this is the old value. So this is basically the difference of Q is equal, is equal to the learning rate times the, the new value minus the old value. So that is the quote unquote loss term. And um, if I if if you want to simplify this, so um, let me open the mat, let me open MATLAB's documentation on Q learning. So uh, or rather, let me pull up these equations on a separate window. So this quantity is the new value, the new Q value. Why? The first term here is the reward that you got 
other step. And the second one is the discounted maximal Q value for the next step. So here, basically, uh, SI prime is the next state. And um, you find what whichever action gives you the maximal Q and what's the Q value for that. So this gives you, so this is basically the same term as, so this new thing is same as YI. And I call these two things as YI. Great, so that's the new Q value. And that's this, this is the old Q value. So your loss is basically um, the difference between the two. And because we do RMS loss, um, that's why there is a square over here. So that's the loss you would use to compute gradients. Now the gradients are with respect to the neural network parameters. So uh, basically this is your Q network and your thetas are the parameters of your neural network. And then you will update your neural network with respect to these gradients and then the learning rate. So what has been done is that this whole paradigm of Q learning has been reframed as a supervision task, as a supervised learning task. Sorry, supervised learning, yeah. So that's why you have the standard RMS loss function. And then uh, this tells you how the Q values or how the parameters should be moved so that the new Q values are uh, how they should be. So um, ultimately, it's just a reframing of the same old loss, uh, same old Q learning equation. Now, there are certain things uh, that are different and I would like to talk about them briefly. So reinforcement learning is a bit hard to do compared to supervised learning because here um, it's very hard to train the network to go in the direction where you want it to go because of stability issues and um, uh, catastrophic forgetting and whatnot. So the first thing is in Q learning, when we calculated the the next step, the Q value for the next step, we used our same Q table. But um, in deep Q learning, notice that there is a Q prime. And here there's a Q. So to calculate the Q value for the next step, you would use a different network. Now you have two networks, your main network, and then you would have a target network. Both the networks would have the same weights. It's just that the target network is delayed by um, a certain number of steps. So what I mean by that is the um, every time you complete an episode, the target network and the Q networks, um, the weight becomes the same. Like you copy over your main network's weight over to the target network and so that they're exactly the same. But then during once once the episode is going on, there is a difference between the weights. So the target network is always lagging behind the, the main network. And the reason for this is stability. If you keep both the queue, uh, both the networks to be the same, the network is a bit unstable. And I, I don't want to go into the theoretical reasons for that, but then that's essentially what happens. The training is a bit unstable. So that's why you need, uh, so that's why you always want to keep two different networks although they're copies of each other it's just that they're delayed target is a bit delayed behind the main network so that's the concept of keeping the target network now there's another thing that's called the replay buffer so when you perform this final learning step meaning you calculate the loss the loss is calculated over a batch now this batch is state action reward action sorry state action reward state so every transition step so whenever you make a transition from one state to the other so let me start writing that so whenever you make a transition from oh the font is too big so whenever you make a transition from the next uh, from this state to the next state so oh, okay st at you get so at st, you take action t, you reach state t plus one, and then you get a reward, right? 
So you store this uh, this this pair in uh, in your memory. So this memory is typically called the replay buffer because this transition is what you will use for learning or for training your uh, network. Why? Because if you see what are the values, what are the things that you need to train the network? You need the reward. You need uh, the queue value, uh, and the queue value requires the state, the next state, and also you need the previous state and the action. So these four things, or um, the pair of these tuples, is what you would require. So this is one experience. So this is so every transition step acts as a learning point. So and over the course of playing an episode, you will perform lots of these actions right or lots of these transitions so in our environment you'll perform 200 transitions and you learn from each of these transitions so uh, a replay buffer basically stores say last 20000 transitions so it always keeps a track of whatever your last 10000 20000 or whatever size you set number of transitions and you randomly pick say m so M could be 32, 64, whatnot. M is the batch size. So you randomly pick 32 of those transitions or 64 of those transitions, and then you perform this whole learning step. So at every after every transition, you perform one learning step. So uh, and to perform the learning step, you randomly just um, pick up some some uh, transitions from your replay buffer, and then you perform learning on them. Now, the idea behind replay buffer is that you want to keep a lot of memory, like because you're storing 10,000 transitions, that means you have a lot of memory from your previous episodes. Because if you only remember the recent 32 steps or recent 64 steps, what you would do, you would forget the, the good episodes that you had, the good transitions that you had. So, so it's good to always have a large replay buffer that has the memory of all the good and bad transitions that happened um, previously. So that's about it. So replay buffer and um, replay buffer and this target queue network, because uh, the main and the target queue networks are two techniques we use for stabilizing this queue learning procedure. And ultimately, this deep queue learning is uh, just a, a different way of rewriting this whole equation uh, in, in, in the neural network setting. Yeah, I, I didn't do a good job of explaining it, but then if you want to uh, see the exact training algorithm, I urge you to check out the deep queue learning page for uh, in the documentation where this whole algorithm is listed out. So just to go over this, um, once again, so let me just zoom in a bit. So you first um, have a, a critic network, which is your queue network, and then you have a target network as well. And then you start such that both the networks have the same weights. That means they're clone of each other. And um, depending on the exploration, which we talked about last time, you take an action. And the action is basically whatever action gives you the largest Q value. So initially, it will be random because uh, your network is untrained. And also, you are performing the exploration as well. So you execute the action, whatever action that you executed. And you would get a reward and the next state, S prime. So you store this tuple, state, action, reward, the next state in this buffer. And then uh, what you would do is you, and again, um, you sample a random mini batch from these experiences. So just pick out, say, 32 from this uh, from this experience buffer. Uh, great. So and then you perform Q learning in a similar step. So uh, again, calculate the final value. So we use the QN, not the double QN. So just um, calculate uh, the final value using reward and reward for that um, particular tuple that you picked up and then the maximum Q value using the target network. And then you update your network. Uh, so first you calculate this loss and then you update your network with respect to derivatives of this loss, with respect to the parameters of this network. And um, 
and then you repeat this for every step that you perform in your network or rather in, the, in your environment. And that's the gist of how it goes. And after, um, after you perform this update, you can update the target, uh, target network depending on how do you want to update it. So uh, there are different ways of updating it. So some people like to perform a smooth update where you gradually update it towards the main network, or you can you know, directly copy over all the parameters. So it's just um, how you want to go about it. These are different ways of stabilizing your network. So this is basically the, the DQ learning algorithm. And we will see how to basically implement this in reinforcement learning toolbox. The good thing about the toolbox is we don't, we do not care about how to implement these things. All we care about is designing our Q network and also just specify the parameters of replay buffer and all those other things. That's all we need to do. Um, the, the toolbox care, takes care of everything else. So that's the great part about this reinforcement learning toolbox. All right, so I've gone uh, 15 minutes, 16 minutes. So uh, I think I'll end this video now and see you guys the next time.